And welcome to uh, the Leith Noise Up show. We're going to open with a, a little bit of a story from Mr. Um, Attridge, who was about to tell us a story before we went live. So carry on. A eulogy. A eulogy. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. Um, and as you can see, I'm a fan. Um, but anyway, it was about that bit about Maggie uh, and the hate, well, hate as well. There's, I, I actually hate and despise Tony Blair more. Because when 1979 came, yeah. there was a feeling of despair. The Tories are coming, but when Tories are coming, you knew it was coming, you just didn't realise the extent that they do it. Yeah. But in 97, there was hope. Indeed. And he destroyed hope. Carried it on, you know. Um, so actually, I actually think Blair is without a doubt the worst. Um, and his body count is far higher. Well, that's a yeah. fair point. Yeah, Why don't we just introduce today's guests. Uh, we have a new guest today. We have Graham Anderson. Good afternoon. Uh, Alex Grant, yeah. Phil Attridge, Norris Stewart, myself Stuart Lockhead. And um, we won't be talking about what's in the papers today. There's far too much to talk about. We've got Thatcher, 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 probably. That's all that's in the papers today, isn't it? <laughs> Has been for days. And um, I, I, I almost feel I should start with Phil, but I'm not, because no, otherwise no. it's going to go on forever. I think we'll start with uh, Norrie. Uh, have, you, have you done a, car a Thatcher cartoon yet? No. Um, Why not? Basically, because every time I had an idea, somebody else beat me to it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I have particular favourites. I like the uh, the gotcha with the grim grim reaper underneath it. I thought that was quite good. I just I, I must admit I'm kind of in two minds about the whole thing. I did go to a party. That's true. When I met you. Yep. <laughs> Thatcher's death party it was called. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's almost like the damage done started. I would say by Thatcher has just been continued. Well, that's, I think, what Phil yeah, was yeah. saying, really. Yeah. If, 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 if it had been ended by the Labour Party coming in in 97, we wouldn't be where we are today, so no, angry. They betrayed us. It's the Labour Party they, that betrayed us more than anybody else. But it's the usual political excuse. Because we don't have any ideas, because we are well and truly in the smallest box you can think of, we can't solve the problem of May industry. You know, So let's just shut it all down and to hell with what happens to people. And that it has been such a dearth of original thinking for the last forty years. You know, the only solution to a problem is cuts. Yeah. The only solution is that the poor suffer because the rich haven't. They got better off. You've got nowhere to go. As far as I can see, there's nowhere to go. Labour's as bad. The Liberal Democrats are just Tories. Mm. So where where do you go? Labour's come up with nothing that makes me think they'll make a difference. You just look at the front bench, you know, same old stuff. They could be wearing blue ties, red ties, or yellow ties. Same story. Alex? Well, it's all a bit depressing. I feel pretty negative about it in the respect that uh, I'm reading a book at the minute that basically is an economic analysis of Britain's decline since 1914. It was 1914 and the First World War was the beginning of the end for the British Empire. Apogee. Yeah. And after that, basically, other countries like the US and Germany and Japan and Japan since then, although Japan in the last 20 years had its own problems. Britain has been devoid of, of quality economic policy for a hundred years. It's gone up and down a wee bit. Last time we came out of a big recession, we solved it by ending up in a war with Germany, as we all know. Um, you know, and you could say that Thatcher was just an example of neoliberalism which has infected a whole load of places because as you said earlier there seems to be or somebody said earlier it's Phil there seems to be it, it is presented to us that there is no alternative when I think there is an alternative I, I don't know how many countries are successful the Scandinavian countries are always quoted as the ones who seem to be well, able to balance just, it. we could even go to one extreme look at China extremely successful and it's certainly not it's still <laughs> He's going there. Well, it's extremely successful in one respect, but I think the this uh, potential explosion about to happen because, you know, some of the, I read the other day that the Yanks have started making washing machines again because the, Jap the the Chinese middle classes are now looking for proper salaries. So all uh, all of all of a sudden, you know, transporting washing machines from China to the U.S. is 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 not <coughs> really possible anymore. So watch this space where China's going to start. Well, there you go. But, but, yeah, but, 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 okay, before I bring somebody else in, can I point out one thing that, well, let's go back to Thatcher. 
Thatcher shut down the steelworks and the shipbuilding and the mines. Now the mines is a different issue, but energy <coughs> prices are, is a world commodity. But certainly, right now, we were told when they, they shut down the, basically the steel, they shut down the steelworks because we, we weren't building ships. And we were told, oh, we couldn't build ships cheap enough because no, the wages be. were in Korea and whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, but look, yeah. where, are the, where are the biggest ships in the world built today? France and Finland. They're not cheap wage economies. No. no. No, 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 I, 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 you're up to, it's a very fair point. Uh, again, as you know, I used to work in aviation, and uh, before European avi aviation got uh, liberalised, Mrs. Thatcher was at the sharp end of that, because she sa said, I'm going to privatise this state company called British <coughs> Airways, and I'm going to open up the market to all and sundry, which sounds great, but British Airways ended up as a consequence, um, arguably... A monopoly. Well, it, it has ended up in a monopoly, but I would suggest to you that Air France is probably in a stronger position because the French protected Air France. Now, some other countries who tried to protect the national airlines were trying to protect something that was never going to be protectable went down the tube. But, you know, Mrs. I can remember Mrs. Thatcher pointing to two things uh, at, at her in her heyday. France was a socialist disaster about to happen, and so was Sweden, by the way. Sweden, just watch Sweden. Sweden's got, got a hell in a wheelbarrow. I would, I would invite anybody watching this to go and take a weekend in Stockholm and see how bad Sweden is, because Sweden is probably the best place on the planet in terms of general well-being and everybody being happy. There's nobody selling a big issue, and they're all, they're all good-looking as well, but that's just like... That's just, it's just it's annoying. <laughs> both, so we get better German. looking with a yes for it. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> right then, Graham, it's your turn. To well, I think Alex is quite right, and I think this is one of Thatcher's major failings. <clears throat> I, the the idea that Britain was in a, new, a unique position in the 60s and 70s with its declining economy is just patently false. Most of Western and Northern Europe was in the same situation, but they decided to tackle things very differently. Mm -hmm. And they have tackled things differently without the divisiveness and destruction and the absolute destitution that Thatcher and Thatcherism caused. And to me, that's one of the greatest failings. I mean, an estimated 20 billion of manufacturing and tooling and skills gone white overnight. And I think that's just an incredible, incredible crime because None of it was necessary. Many of these heavy industries were profitable at the time. Your family, your, uh, father, your father's family so was heavy engineering in the west of Scotland. Absolutely correct. And, and here's the thing, um, you know, a decent decision would have been to invest in the skills, invest in the engineering, invest in the capacity to do it, and bring it up to date. But sadly, the spiteful choice was chosen. Let's, let's to look at look, we, We've had 20 or 30 years of privatising things <clears> right across the world in all kinds of different economies. And there's obviously more than one way to do it. You've got the extreme way to do it, which was obviously the Soviet Union, and you ended up with all these Russian mafia oligarchs getting really rich. Mm -hmm. We've well, even got an example here in Leith. I mean, the privatisation of Leith, Leith docks was appalling. Fourth ports. I mean, the, the managers were allowed to buy the company. Mm -hmm. And what did? They, and, and, and once the company was privatised, they had exclusive rights that they did, weren't even subject to ordinary planning controls. Right. Anyway, yeah. Phil, come on, you've got more experience with this. So you were, a, you you oh. were, I think you were a councillor at the time. Uh, no, well, that's that's picking up on something. You know, picking up something you said about China. I mean, I just buy balls just about balls out of my head. Yeah, well, China, I thought, China is I just about wanted to give you an extreme explode. example. China, yes. if, if we had a property bubble and Spain had a property <laughs> bubble, they've got a property. Yeah. They've got a galaxy of a bubble. Waiting to explode. What, was it just 40 percent of the new buildings just, are not just, just Google right? those cities. There are cities sitting there, infrastructure, everything there, shopping malls. I mean, cities for a million people and nobody living in them because it's all driven by just making no Bed, bedroom tax solution. <laughs> well, there's, 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 <laughs> one is, there's no. But when you were talking about the heavy industry, uh, and you used to get, I mean, coal miners, steel workers, shipbuilders, uh, hard. Um, skill jobs, um, good wages, um, and if you look at other parts of the world where they've all done that, but the whole point is you can't have these oiks, these working classes, I mean, that's it, they get wages, Oikes. and then they get educated, um, and then they form into unions, and we're a class-ridden society, and they look down their noses, go to Germany, try part art, trade unions, government, um, the, you know, the, and industry, they work together. They all, I mean, they've still got their rich people, they've still got their poor people, but they still have their industries, they're all still, yeah. they still and, all have their and training. Still, they did it without oil, that's the other thing that doesn't get talked about. Yeah, exactly. They, they, 
Oh, Thatcher saved Britain. Aye, that no, just went into Scottish her, oil. Oil. Into her yeah, mate's pockets. Um, all these companies, all these co all these things that got sold off, they were sold off to their mates yeah. at the end of the day. I mean, I mean, uh, but what's more, Sorry, really, I really, really, what's really sad school. here is the working classes, right? Oh, look, I mean, you, you work beside yeah, them. That's a lie. They were all sold to German, Spanish, and Frenchmen. Uh, well, eventually, eventually they well, got there. The utilities, the utilities. Oh, yeah. But they were they were sold no. to, to the workers. You, you can buy a share. Well, listen, you can initially buy they were given away cheap so the individuals could make some money. I bought TSB shares. I bought, yeah, I was I bought, a carpet bagger. I bought, I bought a number of those shares. They're not all the oh they knew all the. I did well out of that. Okay. You can do if you're going to five bob, then it'll all go to the Germans, the Spanish, right. and the. But let's 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 let, 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 let's 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 finish just finish my. Yeah, we're going to move on. But the same subject, move on. She just went across the Atlantic, and he looked at that raggedy ass Americanism, right? Give people a few shares. They think they, you know, they they've got no health insurance, no decent housing, no bloody teeth, nothing. But they've got they've got a few dozen shares in their back pocket, so they're middle class. Right. Okay. Let's let. We're, we're Sorry, not, I'm a European. Right. We're not going too far. We're going to look at your uh, t-shirt here. Yeah, we go and I'll climb down. And it rejoice, it says, hey ho, the witch is dead. Yeah. Now you've had that t-shirt for quite a long time, in a, well, it's sealed in a bag. Yeah, my daughter got through my 60th birthday, it was in a bag, which hung up in an emergency and it says, uh, in the event of the de death of Maggie Thatcher, immediately open and aware. <laughs> right, so <laughs> next week we're going to have a not state funeral, costing eight million at the moment. More than that, more than that because of state funeral. Oh, yeah. 700 because members of the armed forces. I mean, if, if you called a pig a horse, it wouldn't be a pig, exactly. Yeah, well, and, it, hard, and, and it's going to be well, it could be a target of some considerable. Oh, god, you believe in the, you believe in the propaganda that. yourself? Um, please, the police will stop that. What, yeah, what, that, that okay, well, one at a time, guys. That is actually the figure I want to see the cost of the security. Oh, okay, yeah, 700 yeah. soldiers. Well, well, they're not the security. They well, just stand there looking good. They're already being paid, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> what I don't understand personally is that uh, Mark Thatcher is reputedly to be worth around 89, 90 million pounds. And how come he's called Sir? Well, I think that's... He's it, a that's tube. Dennis Thatcher, I think, received one of the last hereditary... No, no, Dennis uh, Thatcher didn't. His mother did. did his his mother, his mother got his Was that the last Thatcher hereditary? Got hereditary period, yeah. So that can make that does, on our son. Does yeah. that sadly mean that Mark Thatcher gets to sit in the Lords? Uh, I don't, well, I don't know. Sure I because, because, yeah, but he, actually, he should be they, sitting there. That would, that would be an affront. You, can, 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 you, can we just remember how close he came to being locked up in an African country? Oh, well, he was in jail. A coup. He was in jail yeah. and he was let out. But that's where he's made his money, gun running. He should be in Pentonville. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, I doubt he could find the Lords anyway. <laughs> anyway, what do you, so what, what, let's, let's run round the, the table. Um, what do you think, Alex, of the. This uh, snot state funeral, is it a good idea or a bad idea? Um, depends from what perspective you're asking the question. Uh, I, by definition, it's a bad idea by every objective standard. Uh, the Tory party, I presume, think it's a great idea, just like they thought, you know, spending a lot of money on the Jubilee and the Olympics and everything else was another attempt to, to sh bolster I mean, it amazes me. One, one minute we're broken Britain, the next minute we're a success because of Thatcher. So they're going to try and deify us. There's no question about no, that. That was an excellent way, point. One minute we're broken Britain, the next yeah. minute we're, we're, we're it's fine. a success because of Thatcher. I, I, absolutely. And it, it's another attempt by the Tory party to, to present Britain in a certain fashion and they think it's going to do them some good. So unfortunately, I think half of the country will probably think it's great. The other half will think it's disgraceful. I'm interested in knowing, and I don't know, I'd love to go out there and carry out some research, how many Scots who typically, the majority of whom don't, didn't like Thatcher, will be more positively predisposed to voting yes as a consequence of them doing it. I, I can't believe anybody in Scotland, or very few people in Scotland, think we should be spending the money. Well, there's certainly a younger generation who don't feel the way us older people do. Graham, you're a younger man. I think it's an affront to have a state funeral for this woman. Um, she destroyed hundreds of thousands of, of families you know, and um, communities, yeah, yeah. towns, and, yeah. and we'll be feeling the effects of that for another fifty hundred years. Oh, easy. Um, so, so the the idea that you know the Thatcherites down in Westminster want to edify her position and to a certain extent rewrite history, um, it, it frankly disgusts me. I think it's a front, um, and and of course you know 
it's very hypocritical because not all prime ministers have had the same attention no. in the, on the occasion of their death. So uh, I find the whole thing a bit distasteful, frankly. There you go. Phil? Drop her into a wood chipper, freeze dryer and fire her into space. <laughs> a wood chipper? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to tell some of the, 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 the distasteful jokes that have been around? Like Jimmy Savile met her in hell and Jimmy said to Maggie, I bet I've screwed more fucking miners than you have, well, Maggie. Actually, well, well, actually, can I just give you a weird side of sitting here? I mean, I boasted it's burning hell. She won't be. She'll be well at home in hell. She'll, well, be, other, si yeah. she'll be sitting having tea with no, Pinochet. She's sat down three furnaces yep, already. She'll be that sitting, was the other one, yeah. She'll be sitting she having there. tea with Pinochet and Ronnie Regan, but yeah. my only hope is the likes of Jarrah, Allende, Bobby Sands, and all these people will be up in heaven pissing down into their teapot. <laughs> I know. My, 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 my vision of her is she, she gets up there and she doesn't get into heaven, Peter will know where Of course. Just to get into hell, the devil will know where it is. But Lenin and Trotsky let her into the socialist utopia. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to say. <laughs> Union membership's compulsory, Maggie. <coughs> well, that'll work. <coughs> right, I, just, I, I think the whole thing. Right, wait, oh, it's ridiculously it's, distasteful. Is anybody got anything else they want to bring up today? No, it's Maggie, Maggie, well, Maggie. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, it was yesterday some um, kind of 99% fawning in Parliament when they well, all came Parliament. back. Well, that's um, true. And all I can say is. Thank God for Glenda. Yeah, I thought she did that. Glenda track. Jackson. Glenda yeah, Jackson. Yeah, I mean, this is it. She's under orders from um, Millie Panda, um, and that was it. Straight in there, you know. Yeah, she no, just left it. her nameless. Yep, yep. Yeah, I did think. It, I did think it was a bit of a joke, though. I have to say, when when she, who represents Hampstead and Highgate, was talking about the the poor people in her constituency who had been. Glenda Jackson. In, oh, I had been done in by Thatcher. I thought, mm, interesting, because I actually don't like Glenda Jackson. I think she's just a lovey. Oh yeah, very much so. Cause but, but I just thought it was a joke. If well, she was, if she was from Rotherham, it would have been some residence. But well, can I, I give you an idea? A wee anecdote about that. Um, it goes back to the Ken Livingston and uh, the. the well, he was good. He couldn't yeah, find any. No, no. But when when the Labour Party dumped Ken Livingston and didn't want him to be the, the mayor, mayor. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, my mum's always been a Ken Livingston fan and all her pals, right, because he was their MP in yeah, Brent. Yeah. Um, and I go down and I says, well, what's the matter with Frank Dobson, mum? And she says, doesn't want the job. And I says, what about Glenda Jackson? She says, she can fuck off back to Hampstead. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's understandable. And there's all these 70-odd-year-old ladies sitting. <laughs> hey, when Ken won. Uh, that's brilliant. Uh, was, what's his name there? <laughs> Skinner. Skinner. No, no, he was no. one of the men. No, who, they stayed away. Who wouldn't uh, go. I thought he might turn up just, just to have a dig. I, would, I guess he... Yeah, it must have been quite difficult for the likes He's of He's had a dig in print. I'm sure he has. Aye, I saw that. But I'd like to have had him, because he would have given it full throttle. I believe the SNP threw a, a few buckets of mud. Well, I think it's Robertson. Oh, yeah, just, good. just said, Angus Robertson. The rest of them didn't show up. No, no, so it was only Angus Robertson who spoke. He it's spoke for, for, for the SNP in Ply Cymru, yeah. and he said, I'm very sorry for all our friends and relatives, naturally, but, you know, we'll never forgive her in Scotland for the poll tax in Scotland and Wales. So he... He he stuck the knife in with some finesse. He didn't go over the top. He couldn't be accused. He didn't go as far as Glenda Jackson because they were starting to go yeah, but he sucks to Glenda Jackson. But but he made the point quite well. Well, there was two things for me yesterday about this recall to Parliament that particularly struck me. The first one was that um, uh, the fact that MPs are recalled at the taxpayers' expense uh, up to three thousand two hundred fifty. Yeah, you know where where they could where they could easily have just turned up before the funeral next week, and the taxpayer wouldn't have had to fit the bill. The second thing is that the opposition side of the chamber was absolutely empty, um, and I think that um, totally blows out the water any Thatcherite and Tory ideas that this was the, the great prime minister she was, because frankly. If the chamber's half empty, oh, then I think you know. I think in all fairness, she was a great a great Tory prime minister. The fact oh, yeah. that, the fact that her system failed, um, which is I mean it, it's part of the game, isn't it? You know, okay, sorry about the banks. Um, damn. <laughs> oh, that was a great. Yeah. Oh, we've no council housing, bedroom tax. You know, 
a lot of that can be can be sourced back to her. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, selling off the council houses wasn't a bad idea, but not allowing them to spend the money to well, build no, new ones was I, a bad idea. I have a complicated question for you then. And it, it, it was a good point made by a Tory on Twitter. There's a housing shortage, mm. but people are still living in the houses that were sold. So what in effect happened was, it was an excuse not to build. <coughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. That's right. That's what happened. That was the mistake. Not particularly that they sold off the stock, they just didn't replace it. No, that's my point. I, well, it was, it was, it's it illegal to replace it. It wasn't a mistake, it was a policy because mm -hmm. she, she believed, well, council housing is a, is a contradiction, you shouldn't have it. And Tony Blair came in and followed it. But that, I mean, the point the film made, I mean, I, I remember when it came out thinking, right, the councils have got money from the stock, why can't they build? It's illegal. You know, that was I mean, a deliberate policy. That, that was that why make it illegal? Because there's no way. I mean, I think it was at the time you had to sell four council houses to get the money to build one. Well, you would have done. Well, so there was only a place twenty five percent of the stock. Oh yeah, you're getting sweeties. You're getting seventy yeah. percent um, off a council flat, um, and you were getting around thirty percent off a house. Well, that was even oh, oh, it was better than that. No, it was more than 30%. I mean, I, no, know it's, people, it's, I know people that have bought properties worth 18,000, 90,000 for 17,000. Oh, yeah. That, that, that was when you started off, when you just qualified. Oh, right. right. You, were there, right. you would get 30, but the longer you had been there, the percentage oh, yeah, okay, would right. here, go here, so, I mean, What else was it, the, the, the Thatcher's legacy over the years? Well, there's the huge, unmitigated welfare bill that she caused. Well, she, 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 used, North sea, she used the money from North Sea Oil... <laughs> to shut down all these in manufacturing businesses yeah. and then she disguised the, the size of the unemployed by moving people onto incapacity belt. benefits. The central belt of Scotland went from almost full moved employment them into to in capacity benefits. And, now, and now, these pe now these people are called skyvers. Yeah. And they were, they, were, they were done out of their Post livelihood by the Tories. The most important thing about legacy is the way she managed to massage figures. Aye. But yeah. Also, but as well, five million. She managed to make it look like three and a half. Yeah, yeah. Sue so said two, 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 two phrases. She said right, um, which is why when you get complaints, as I've had about the terminology using, which mm. with great delight on on social media, like you know, and and, and I thought I was being laid back about throwing her in a wood chip, or actually I was being quite nice. Um, I'd have done it when she was alive. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> Well, she used those phrases, there's no society, right? So there's no society, so yeah. there's no societal mores, so I can do what I like to her, and I'm yeah. dropping her in a wood chip her feet first. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And also as well, let's hold the, the enemy within. Exactly what she is and her class. The enemy within our society. And unfortunately, right? they are now... I hear a bit of class warfare. Anyway, they're, they're kind of now in charge. And we, we, we shall return to this next week. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you here today, and thank you very much for being here. Can I just apologise to Scum? Yes. <laughs>